Oscar. It's okay. Well, good morning and happy Mother's Day. We've already had a uh, wonderful celebration this morning of our moms with our uh, ladies' breakfast. And uh, now as we come into the sanctuary, we welcome you to our Sunday morning service. We're so excited that you are here today and uh, excited just to fill you in on a couple of things. If you're a guest with us today, you received a bulletin when you came in, hopefully, and it has a fold-out portion to it. That's our guest card if you don't mind filling that out, then tearing it out and placing it in the offering box on the Welcome Center, or you can give it to me as you leave today. would appreciate your, uh, uh, your uh, filling that out so that we have a record of your visit with us this morning here at Broadway Baptist Church. Uh, also, on that uh, guest card at the very bottom, there's a place to fill out if you have any prayer requests. That's for anybody, not guests, but just anybody. So uh, if you'll fill out that part, also put it in the uh, offering box. We will make sure and pray over your request this week as a church staff. So uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be able to do that. It's a great honor and privilege to be able to be here today. Also want to remind you to uh, make sure you're following us on socials. Uh, that is the uh, Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram. You can follow us. Search uh, Broadway Baptist Sweetwater. You'll find us. And then uh, go ahead and uh, follow us from that point on. You keep up to date with everything that's going on in the church and uh, everything that you need to know about uh, Sunday services. And then if you miss, how many of you have your moms here with you? How many of you have your grandmothers here with you? You have your grandmothers. There's a few that have grandma. Okay, so uh, good deal. We're going to do some special things today to honor our mom's message today is for mom as well. And then uh, we also, you're probably wondering why Andrew's standing up here with me, other than he just makes me look good because he's taller and got the, all that facial hair. He, he looks like I used to look. That's what it is right there. But uh, anyway, he's going to give you an announcement about Friday night. Friday night is a uh, youth fundraiser for uh, youth camp. So uh, tell us all about it. So this Friday at uh, 6 p.m., we're going to be doing our, our barbecue banquet. Since we didn't get to have our Valentine's banquet, way back when it you know it was zero degrees sorry to remind you about that we didn't get to have our first uh, our youth fundraiser for camp and so this friday the 14th at 6 p.m we're gonna be having our barbecue banquet we're not doing pasta we're not doing tacos we're doing brisket baby Amen. We're, we're doing brisket we're, all right, there's a rumor maybe that we're gonna have a baked potato bar mac and cheese coleslaw some bread i mean it we got it all it's gonna be a good time so come that's a rumor no it's, it's confirmed now. Okay, it's confirmed. It's confirmed. All right, good. It, it was rumored before now, so spoiler alert. But that'll be this Friday at 6 p.m. Come, we're, I mean, it's going to be a barbecue banquet. We're going to have all of uh, we're going to have some cornhole set up and some other games for you guys to play. It's going to be like a backyard barbecue. That's what it is, and it's it's all a youth fundraiser. It's all by donation basis. We're not paying per plate. It's just whatever the Lord lays in your heart to give for for these kids to go to camp, and then also for teens, be there at, at five. And I'm sure I'll remind you of that this week but be there at five to get ready before that but yeah this that's this friday the 14th the 6th it's in the family center okay and also a couple more youth announcements hey, yeah all right y'all yeah. don't even know what that is sorry arsenio hall just popped out and and uh, anyway uh, one other thing um well the mad scientist brings his tray in we're all <laughs> Uh, obviously, uh, you got a couple more youth announcements, uh, Max Air and Senior Recognition Sundays coming up too, right? Go ahead and tell us about that. Yes, so uh, on the 22nd will be our, our Max Air. We're going to take a, a good group to uh, the trampoline park over in Abilene. That's uh, $15 a person, and then if, you, if you've never been before and you don't have the socks, it'll be $2 extra for the socks. And then... Uh, you guys will also have to sign a waiver. Uh, I'm not sure if the link is in here or not. I haven't actually looked. Uh, but I'll get a you. A waiver? Yeah. Just so if, if you get hurt, you can't sue, you know, type of thing. So, when um, you get hurt. Yeah. Not, not if, when, right, <laughs> right Sergio, 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 William, your ankles 
But yeah, so we'll have tape a, your ankles before you put the. We'll have a link for you guys to, to fill out the waiver for that beforehand, and then we'll have the senior recognition Sunday that following day. So hopefully the seniors don't break their ankles the day before. Yeah, and limp it up on crutches. And we'll we'll be recognizing our seniors, uh, Logan, Jonathan, Sergio, and Zach Morgan. So be there for that. It's going to be a really special day for the seniors. All right, ladies, don't forget that Wings moves to the uh, next week, okay, because tomorrow night is our Central West Texas Fellowship meeting. Hopefully you can make it back for that tomorrow night. And the service starts at 7 o'clock with the Central West Texas pastors. Uh, be here. We're going to have a really great service. Uh, Dr. Larry McCaden will speak for us tomorrow night. And then Tuesday morning, if you don't have anything better to do, you know, you can miss days of our lives for one day, right? Come on now. Hey, don't, now, everybody admit you. Never mind. But uh, anyway, uh, you can miss that if it's 9 to noon or so. 9 to noon is when uh, uh, we'll have the fellowship meeting on uh, Tuesday morning. You're certainly welcome to join us. We're going to have a great time. All right. How, let's hear it for Andrew. Man. Oh, whoa. whoa. You're, you're giving me a what? What is it? Okay, if you are, because uh, Brother John's cooker will cook s numerous br briskets at a time, so if you want your Rumor own. Rumor has it, it's 15, so. Fi up to 15, so if you want to get a brisket and uh, have it cooked, John will do that for you. Have them at his house Thursday, okay? And uh, you can see Brother John after service and get that all set up, okay? Man, I'm glad you're here. Glad you're here. Let's have a word of prayer. We will get started this morning with some great songs to celebrate mom today. Lord, we love you and thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you so much that we are able to gather together here in your house today to celebrate you, yes, but also, Lord, the very, very special people in our lives, our moms. We are so very thankful for them and for all that you do for us. We're looking forward to how you're going to a move in our hearts today. So right now, I just pray you would, uh, you would uh, get everything that we've brought in kind of cleared out of our hearts and of our minds so that, so that we can focus completely and totally on what you have for us today. It's already been a really, really special morning. And now, Lord, as we enter your sanctuary, we do so with reverence, but also with expectation because we know the power of your presence is right here with us now. And Lord, we give this service to you. We lift you up in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand together and sing. It's page 404. The words will be on the screen. Christ, the solid rock, we stand on him today. Let's sing it together. My hope is built. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and I cannot trust the sweetest rain, but only lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails, His lovely gaze, I rest on His unchanging grace. of our praise. Glory to his name. Down at the cross where my Savior died.
aren't you thankful for the love of the Lord today, man? Oh, how he loves you and me. What a great song to just lift up to the Lord today. Oh, how he loves you and me. seated uh the kiddos were coming down the hallway just a minute ago and said man are we having kids church i said absolutely just because it's mother's day so kiddos come on down brother phil's ready for you i'm sure he's got some sort of a mad scientist explosion for you or something it's mother's day after all it's a special day so here we go children's time with phil okay all right All right, well, happy Mother's Day. It's good to have all your mothers. Make sure you go and tell your mothers that you love them. Give them a big hug and a kiss. You know, as, as y'all's age, you think back on your moms as teenagers, even us as, as grown-ups, we go and we can think back and we, can, we know how much of an impact our moms had on our, li- on our lives. Their undying love, their understanding. I remember my mom talked about how I had done something wrong, she caught me. I remember going and asking her, how did you know? And she said, I have eyes in the back of my head. And I always thought as a little kid, that how cool is that, that my mom has eyes in the back of her, in the back of her head. But in much of our, our moms and how, we, and how much y'all, y'all mean to each and every one of us and how y'all went, and if we look down and kind of look back in our lives, we can see how much y'all's influence you know, affected our lives. You know, we're going to look at real fast, uh, in 2 Corinthians, it talks about how God says once we go and we get saved, once we go and we ask Jesus Christ to come into our heart and be our personal Savior, that we're a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things become new. So I got this little thing here, it's going to kind of help us demonstrate when we go and we get saved, the change. Now I got some glue. We all like to go and play with glue. That should be good enough, I think. Oh. We had a little bit of food coloring there that way. It just kind of just makes it a little kind of pretty and everything. And that way it kind of, kind of sees. Yeah. Make it real nice and pretty. Now. This is going to this glass right here kind of represents our life. We kind of, we kind of with sin and everything else, it kind of gets it kind of get a little sticky, can it? With all with, with with the sin, and this glass, I've got some water and some borax in there, and I was in a rush, so we're going to pray that it goes and it works. So I was trying to rush a while ago, trying to get everything, and so we're going to pray that it's, that's like as Jesus, and as we go and we. Once we go and we get saved, the Bible says that when the Holy Spirit comes inside of us, that we're changed. We're going to kind of see this old sticky mess. If it does what it's supposed to be, we're going to kind of be able to go and see it change. Can you, can you can y'all see it already kind of changing a little bit? I better roll up my sleeves because I know what's going to happen here. As we, we're about to get to the fun part here. 
as it goes. Oh, you can see it kind of change. And this is kind of a little messy part. You know, once we go and we get saved, it's just going to take a minute or two to kind of start forming here. But once we go and we get saved, we have the, we have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. You know, that, that goes and that changes us. You know, that goes and our life's not the same as we go and we accept Jesus Christ as our Savior. After we accept Christ as our Savior, we go and not, we have a desire to go and to please God. We have a desire to go and to serve God. We should have a desire to go as you're doing just right now, going to church. Going as we're going, as we're, we're singing these songs, singing them to the Lord. As we're going and we're uh, listening to the teaching and the preaching of God's word. That's, it, it, it's a chance for us to, as we go as, as, as a new believer, as a Christian, to go and to continue to grow. And not only that, but it's a change. Our eternal, our, our, as far as, being, as, far as our, uh, where we spend eternity has changed now. Now, it's not, now we're not destined to be, be separated from God forever. Now we're going to be in heaven forever. So we could go and we could, well, it's going to, if you go and spend enough time rolling it, if we had enough time, you can sit there and get the thing to bounce pretty good. But, you know, as far as you go and just, you can, what, once it was glue, just a little bit of act, just a little bit of that borax and water, and it goes and it changes it. It goes, it changes the molecular part of it where it's not sticky. It's squishy, but it's not sticky. And, uh, and that's how it is with us when we go and we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. We're not the same. We have the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ, living inside of us. And it'll take a few more minutes, more than what we got to sit there and to go and... I wasn't going to do that, but... I thought about it, just, it's just kind of, just throwing it. Sergio's looking right there and just kind of just chunking it to him. We won't do that. But do, we do remember, though, man, to have the Holy Spirit, to have Jesus Christ living inside of us, the Holy Spirit, how awesome is that? That's to be our, our very, our, our, our goal as far as to go, and now that we have that, is to take what we have, what changes us, and to go and to give to somebody else, to go and share that with somebody else. All right? Just going to try to remember to do that this week. Let's go ahead and bow our head for prayer, and we'll pray, and we'll get dismissed over here to the, to the kids' zone. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, again, Lord, we just thank you so much for your love for us. And Lord, we just thank you just so much for, for each one of our moms and what they mean to us and, and just their dedication and sacrifice to the Lord. And we just thank you so much, and we praise you for them. And also, I pray, Lord, just thank you so much for your sacrifice that you've made for us. And I pray, Lord, just let it go and just to burn deep inside of us, the Lord, at that passion that we want to go and take what we have, how you changed us, and we want to go and share that with others. This business that we're going to have our service times now, the Lord, with the kids' quest and the regular church, Lord, just, uh, just it's your will be done in the lives of, the lives of each one of us, Lord. We ask things in the most precious name. Amen. We continue to sing this morning a couple of songs that uh, just always kind of remind me of moms and how special they are in the garden. We just love this song and we love to sing it out together. So let's do it this morning. In the garden. It's page 425. Again, the words are on the screen if you need them. I come to the garden.
blessed assurance through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Blessed assurance. sing for us now. God has highly exalted Jesus and give him him a name above all every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven of things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father he became a man Christ became a man The glory he had known to be a carpenter, a simple carpenter, a lowly servant rejected by. Exalt him today. He became a man, Christ became a man whose destiny was dead. Oh, 
I have my Bible open to Philippians chapter 2 this morning. Philippians chapter 2. So I'd like for you to join me. Find verse 19 when you find Philippians chapter 2. <clears throat> I'm going to pause in our uh, sermon series, No Limits until a message later on today at six o'clock we invite you back for our evening service and uh, we'll talk more out of psalm 78 tonight as uh, we don't want to put any limits on god and what he can do and what he wants to do so we'll see some more uh, principles tonight on how to make that possible that we put no limits on god but for this morning i want you to know that you are in the presence of greatness look around you look around everybody look around real quick and i want you to know that you are in the presence of greatness somebody looked at the person next to him just now and went you seriously what's he talking about well that's right the ladies we have sitting all over this building are our heroes i can honestly say that my mom is sitting right in front of me i appreciate that very much it's a good thing i just don't look in front of me very often when i preach so uh uh but yeah yeah it is true my mom is one of my heroes in my life they're the ones who love us nurture us build us nurse us they love us enough to tell us what we need to hear or hug us just the time we need it they listen they speak wisdom they influence and they impact Because of what moms have done and are doing for us, are doing for us, we have the opportunity to do great things in this world. The bond between mom and child is so incredibly thick. This is likely due to the fact that she carried you and me around for nine months or so, right? I mean, wow. You can't get much closer than that. I know all of this to be true because I have experienced this in my own life. You see, I have a mom who's there for me always in my corner and always wanting the very best for me even though she had to have her triple bypass heart surgery on my birthday several years ago she's still really upset about that but uh, you know what it's okay you're worth it 
that was a it was a memorable 38th birthday okay so uh somewhere around there i don't remember exactly i think that was about right then of course i had a grandmother my nini who passed away uh right around mother's day a few years ago she also influenced my life greatly through an unwavering love they influenced me they impacted me in the bible we see a couple of characters take shape before us in the words that we're about to read saul who was miraculously transformed and saved through a midday meeting with god eventually heeded the call of god on his life to carry the gospel to the known world with a name change to match his heart's change. We remember him as Paul. Then there's one of the most trusted partners of Paul who came alongside him as a young man. He was from the recently evangelized city of Lystra. And guess who evangelized that city? Paul. Lystra was in the region or the state of Galatia entirely possible that this young man's mom and grandmother both being jewish had received jesus christ as their savior upon paul's first visit to their city some three years prior because of his mom and his grandmother's influence their son their grandson timothy also came to know jesus as savior and this led to his leaving his hometown, joining up with Paul and Silas to go on out and impact the world with the gospel of Jesus. We kind of pick up this story in Philippians chapter 2. It's a little later on in the ministry after Timothy had been with Paul for numerous years now. But verse 19 says, but this is Paul speaking to the Philippians, I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy, our KJV says Timotheus, that would be like, you know, uh, just the long version, Timothy, who is who we know him as, shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For, and listen to what Paul has to say about Timothy, I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own, not the things which are Jesus Christ, but ye know the proof of Timothy, that as a son with the Father, he hath served me in the gospel. So him, Timothy, therefore, I hope to send presently, so soon as I shall see how it will go with me. Paul's reputation uh, for being a bit intense has to be remembered when you read these words. Okay, Paul had to be one of the most intense people, characters in all the Bible. I mean, when he glared at you, you cowered. When he preached to you, you sat up straight and listened. When Paul had your attention, if you got distracted, you just fell out of the window. I, I lie. Uh, I call him Eutychus. I think his name is actually Eutychus. You can go back and read that story in Acts. But that is the truth. Paul preached all night long. Eutychus got sleepy. Some of you are getting sleepy about now. Especially some of you have already eaten breakfast this morning. It was really good breakfast. Thank the Lord for that. And now, now you're getting ready for your midday siesta. I understand that too. So I won't preach long today. But I'm telling you, when Paul spoke you set up straight and listened because he just had that kind of command he probably also had that kind of look about him because remember paul had physical scars on his body from bearing the name of jesus christ to the known world at the time listen you don't go through a stoning without having some physical scars on your body and i am certain that one of his ailments was his eyesight because who could see the brightness of the Lord in the middle of the day and not have your eyesight affected a little bit? And so I'm sure that when he's glaring at you, he might not just be glaring at you for that reason. He might not just be able to see real well. 
but it comes across as intensity. And so when he speaks, you listen, because he's got an intense personality. Knowing that he had high expectations for those he worked with is also very important to know. We have to look back at his opinion of Mark. And we find that to be the truth. Because Mark, as also a young Christian and a young man, literally, they got right in the middle of the first missionary journey in the region of Pamphylia, and Mark decided, I'm homesick, and I got to head to the house. And he left them. So from that point on, in Paul's mind, Mark was a deserter. He had some responsibilities that he was supposed to take care of, and he abandoned those, those responsibilities. And Paul wasn't too quick to forgive that. And so when Paul said to Barnabas, his first missionary partner, let's get back out on the road, let's go check on the churches that we've started, Barnabas said, all right, let's, come on, Mark, let's go. And Paul said, whoa, 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 wait a minute here. We're not taking the deserter with us again. We know he can't be trusted. You know? And Barnabas said, you know what? I think there's some potential in young Mark. And Paul said, uh-uh, we're not bringing him. Barnabas said, well, I'm not going if I'm not bringing him. And Paul said, well, if it's got to be that way, it's got to be that way. There may have even been a little bit more of a physical altercation that took place with this, but certainly they had some heated words about Mark. Barnabas ultimately went his way with Mark. Paul said, not taking Mark, and if I can't take Mark, we're not taking Barnabas either. So he took Silas with him on the second missionary journey. And that's immediately when they went back into the region of Galatia, probably to deliver the book of Galatians or the letter of Galatians that had probably just been written out of the Acts 15 council. I just like to throw little things in that like there so all of our theologians in the audience can kind of feast on that just a little bit. But he probably was taking the letter to the Galatians and when he met up in Lystra, there was Timothy with his mom and his grandmother, the Jewesses who had just recently accepted Jesus Christ, again, on the first missionary journey as they came through. But we know that Paul took his partnerships and the ministry very, very seriously. So I wonder how Timothy reaped such praise from Paul. Was it because by the time he wrote Philippians, he had gotten a little older and he got a little softer? I don't think so. I think it was because this praise was well-deserved. Well-deserved. I believe the Scripture has some answers to this question for us. I think we need to go over to 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, and I want you to find verse 1 in 2 Timothy chapter 1. The Bible tells us who's writing. This letter to Timothy, same guy we were just talking about, that Paul was just talking about in the book of Acts. Excuse me, in the book of Philippians, I'm sorry. So verse 1 says in 2 Timothy 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life, which is in Christ Jesus. To Timothy, my dearly beloved son. Okay, not biological, but certainly spiritual. Spiritually speaking, Timothy was Paul's son in the ministry. He says to him, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God, whom I serve from my forefathers with pure conscience, that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day. So it's obvious that Timothy and Paul have been separated they are not together, but Paul is praying for Timothy because he has put him in a place of ministry, and now he's praying for him in that place of ministry. He says, I have great desire to see you, in verse 4, 
being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. Then he says, I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, Timothy, which dwelt first, though, in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And now I am persuaded that that unfeigned faith is in you also. Those are great words, aren't they? Those are encouraging words. It leads us to at least a beginning point to know why Paul would speak such high praise about Timothy to the Philippian church. Lois and Eunice... Not Mama's family. Anybody remember that old show? We're not talking about Carol Burnett and Vicki Lawrence. But Lois and Eunice, Mom and Grandma, Nene, whatever you called your grandmother, influenced Timothy because of their, the word in the Bible is unfeigned, but it means sincere faith. You see, they weren't, just, they weren't just calling it out. They were living it. Lois and Eunice, when they got saved, they were completely and totally sincere about their salvation. They didn't just talk it, they walked it. They lived it. We like to say this, they got all of it when they got saved. I mean, their whole lives were transformed. Again, likely on Paul's first trip through Lystra, Paul and at the time Barnabas preached the gospel of Jesus Christ, and Lois and Eunice heard the word of God. And they responded to the word of God. And they believed in the name of Jesus Christ, by faith, and accepted the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. They accepted the gift. They trusted Jesus Christ as their Savior. And because of that, they were completely transformed as Phil's little ball was trying to be over here today. By the way, I wish I would have known that chemical compound. I would have saved myself a lot of money from Gibson's back growing up, buying little rubber balls that my little brother kept losing. So we could keep our baseball game going on the side yard. We had to play with rubber balls, you see, because we kept breaking the windows in the house. And my dad kept having to fix the windows in the house. And so he transformed our games from hardball to rubber balls just what happened i mean we'd get up early in the morning and we'd rake the field man we had been to we had been to arlington stadium and seen the rangers play you know when you go to baseball game with my dad you get there three hours early and you don't leave for three hours just in case they play a double header and so we had watched them rake the field and everything water the field and we used to go out there in our yard and do that i had such a great pitcher's mound hole set up in our right off of our porch that I pitched into the garage with and our porch probably stepped off about this far and I, the hole was right there and my dad hit it one morning in the dark twisted his ankle I get up getting ready to go to school dad's laid up on the couch with a big old ice bag on his ankle and I, I said good morning dad what are you doing here he goes it's your fault I'm here thank you very much stepped off in that hole and the ankle and all that but anyway back to the story they were transformed because of what jesus christ had done the jesus christ that paul had preached to them lois and eunice responded they heard the good news they believed in jesus and this belief again changed their entire life it reorganized, it reprioritized everything. Let me just tell you something. One of the problems in the church today is we don't have enough people with sincere faith that have their life organized and prioritized around Jesus Christ and His beloved church. Jesus Christ died for the church. 
Lois and Eunice, man, they were all in to the church that was started in their hometown of Lystra upon Paul's coming through. Lois and Eunice's sincere faith influenced a young man in their lives. The one that they should have been influencing the very most with their faith. Their own family. If we don't influence our own family first, what good are we out in the world? To somebody else. They influenced young Timothy with their faith. This influence ended up impacting Timothy greatly. Let's go back to Acts chapter 16 for just a second. Let's see about that influence. The influence impacted Timothy in Acts chapter 16 and verse number 1. Second missionary journey has just started for Paul and now Silas, not Barnabas. And they have made their way back to some of their first churches that they had uh, preached the gospel in. The regions of Galatia again. Verse 1 says, Then came he, Paul, to Derbe and to Lystra. And behold, a certain disciple was there named, what? Timothy. What is he now called? He's called a disciple. The influence of the sincere faith of Lois and Eunice has rubbed off on him. He is now disciplining his life. He has gone through discipleship. Not only has he, not only has he gotten saved, but now he is learning what it takes to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. A certain disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a certain woman. Who is that certain woman? Lois. This grandmother, Eunice. And they were, or she was a Jewess, and he, she had believed, but his father was a Greek or a Gentile. So, this was going to be a major benefit for his ministry, but at least at this time, it is just added information. Likely, his dad. Well, at least we could say we don't know whether or not he ever trusted Christ. That's probably as far as we could take it, but we can think that he might not have had done that. So, verse 2 then says, Timothy was well reported of by the brethren that were at Lystra and Iconium. Him, Timothy, would Paul have to go forth with him so he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek. So Timothy was impacted by Lois and Eunice, his mom and his grandmother. And now he's growing, he's a disciple, he's trusted Christ, he's going through all these... And now Paul comes in and sees what's going on. So, not just Paul, but others were able to see how Jesus had impacted his life through his mom and through his grandmother. There might not be a greater thing we could ever do for our children than to live a Christ-like example before them. Because Lois and Eunice were disciples, Timothy said, i got to have what they got. And so it influenced him, ultimately impacting him as well. If we live the life of Christ in front of those we love, those that we are around constantly or consistently, let me tell you something. It earns us the right to be honest about people's need to believe in Jesus Christ. Very difficult to win somebody to Christ if you don't earn the right to tell them about Jesus Christ. That means you live Jesus in front of them. You talk about the love of the Lord. You don't freak out when things are falling apart around you because you know 
you know, you know that all things are working together for the good. For those who love God, who are called according to His purpose. You know that. Other people see that. You're able to smile through the tears sometime. Move on through the journey, even though you don't feel like it every day. And others see that and are impacted by that. And you earn the right, ultimately, to say, it's not about me, it's all about Him. And I'd love to introduce you to Him. Jesus, our Savior. Obviously, Lois and Eunice had earned the right to talk to young Timothy about Jesus. And when they talked to him about Jesus... Young Timothy accepted Jesus as his Savior, and by the time you come to Acts 16, 1, you find out he's a disciple. He is disciplining his life after Jesus Christ. So the two women in Timothy's life influenced him greatly. I already shared a little bit about my mom. My mom would set me up on the kitchen counter, and then when I got older, I'd kick myself up there myself, and I'd just listen to my mom talk to me while she cooked. We'd just have conversations back and forth. When I was little, my mom could only take so much of me because I had a whole, whole lot of energy and a whole lot of ornery. Okay? Maybe more ornery than energy. And so when my mom couldn't take me anymore, she'd take me to my grandmother. And I spent a lot of time with my grandmother when I was a kid. My grandmother was, was a uh, piano-playing, amazing left-handed, red-headed, fireball of a woman. I don't know if she was really red-headed, but it came out of a can, and that's all I ever knew. I realized that later in life when I, I, got, I, I was tall enough to get it out of the cabinet, and I went, Nene, what's this? And I put my finger, I was like, wah! So it looks like your hair. She goes, put that away, that's my secret. That's okay, I got it. I got it, you know, get a little older, figure all that out, that's okay. I'm, you know, I'm coloring my hair white. Whatever works. Man, my mom and my nene, my nene, she would just, (laughs) from a very young boy, I've told you this before, but because of the unfeigned faith that was in my grandmother and my mom, but but when I was little, and my mom had had enough, she needed a break, and I went to my grandmother's, and she'd lay me down for a nap. You know what she'd do? She would tell me Bible stories before before I would take my nap. And I remember, she'd go, what do you want to hear today? I'd say, man, I want to hear about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So she'd just tell me about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Nene, I want to hear about Daniel and Lions, Den. You know, my namesake. I want to hear about Jonah. I want to, I want to hear about these things. And, 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 and I remember listening to her tell these stories. And guys, I say this not as a testimony to just how great a faith I have, but I say it because I have a mom and a grandma that had such great faith that they imparted their faith to me that I have never, never once in my life doubted that all that didn't happen. That what God's Word says in it is absolutely true. That there were three Hebrew children thrown into the fiery furnace. It was heated 20 times hotter than it had ever been heated before. And when they went into the fiery furnace, they rolled around in there and they got up and they were standing up and they were walking around and all of a sudden Nebuchadnezzar looked in and there was not just three, but there was four people in there. Because Jesus stands for those who stands for him. I remember listening to her relate to me about Daniel getting thrown in that pit with the lions. And now the king rolled the door back the next morning and yelled down in there, Daniel, Daniel, are you all right, buddy? Daniel yelled back, it's okay, king. Had some really good sleeping partners down here tonight. They're nice and soft and cuddly. And he came out of the lion's den unscathed. I've never doubted one time that Jonah got swallowed. It might not have been a whale, but it was a big enough fish to swallow a man. Some say there's big catfish like that. And they've caught them, but they've never landed them. It's big enough to swallow Jonah. It was big enough to carry him around to the depths of the ocean for three days and three nights and vomit him up on the shore. And Jonah learned a lesson the hard way. And then later in life, because I believe that, I read about Jonah. 
And God came to Jonah the, oh, the second time. The second time. See, I can relate to that because, because there was a while that I turned my back on my faith. What I learned as a kid. And I am so thankful that I read for myself later the very truth of God's word that said God came to Jonah the second time. See, I know God called me to preach when I was 12, but I said, "Uh uh-uh, I like football and girls too much. But God came back and spoke to my heart again when I was 21, and I'll never forget it. And it changed my life forever, and I'm so thankful that their faith rubbed off on me so I could have my face in Jesus and hopefully show and tell others what he has done for me. Ultimately, Timothy became sensitive to God's call on his life. And that's where verse 3 in Acts 16 says, that's when Paul took him and he, he circumcised him. We don't have to go into a lot of great detail, but Timothy was willing to do whatever it took to minister to as many as he could. So therefore, he presented himself to be circumcised because his dad as a Gentile didn't make him get circumcised when he was eight days old, as a Jewish young boy would have been. And so Timothy said, I'll do whatever it takes. Listen, guys, surrendering to circumcision as a young adult is true surrender to the ministry. If not symbolically, even physically. And Timothy was willing to do that so that he could preach the gospel and people could see that he was willing to pay the price to do that. So when Paul experienced all of this in Timothy, he must have then invited him to join the team. The influence of faith in his life enabled him to be open to be called and upon heeding the call his life would immediately begin to impact others yep he went out on the missionary journey on the second missionary journey probably on the third missionary journey and then anytime boy you gotta love what paul would do to young timothy timothy was a real pastor had a real pastor's heart he was a very very uh humble very soft hearted man dealing with a very hard-hearted first century people who had been under Roman influence way too long. And so Paul, with his soft-hearted preacher, would say, Timothy, I need you to go over to Ephesus. They're having problems. You need to go over there and you need to be their pastor. And he would go over to Ephesus and he'd be their pastor. Likely, that's where he was when he wrote 2 Timothy to him. When the Corinthians were having trouble, and oh, did the Corinthian church have trouble. They didn't just get one letter, they got two from Paul. Actually, they got four, we just have two of them in the scriptures. Who'd he send over there? You got it, Timothy. Why? Because he had a soft heart, he had a pastor's heart, he had a love and a compassion for people that Paul didn't have. But he knew he could trust so I'm sending him to you. But it was all born out of an unfeigned, a sincere faith from a grandmother and a mother to a grandson and a son. Timothy. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes. And let's stand together today. I believe all of us need to just take a moment to consider As we prepare for invitation this morning, has God, our Creator, influenced your life toward believing in Jesus? Has that happened today through hearing about Timothy coming to know Christ? Maybe your mom, maybe your grandmother has exhibited faith before you and you've never trusted. Maybe today you just step out as we begin to sing in just a moment, come down to this altar and you just... Tell somebody who's standing here who's ready to talk to you, ready to pray with you that you just need to be saved. They'd be glad to tell you and show you in the Bible. 
Let's also consider what kind of a godly influence am I being on my children, my grandchildren, the kids around us. Guys, there are kids in our church today that don't have a whole lot of godly influence in their home, but they could have some godly influence at church if you'd be that kind of an influence in their lives. What kind of a godly influence are you being right now? And lastly, I just ask you today, consider, is your life impacting others for Jesus? If it's not, boy, it should be. And maybe today you just need to come to this old-fashioned altar and just surrender your life to the Lord and say, look, I'm tired of living like I'm living. I really want to live a sincere faith. I believe the Lord will answer that prayer today and give you the answer that you need. So, Lord, we give this invitation to you right now. We trust you to speak to our hearts personally and privately in the quietness of this moment as the songs begin to get sung we just uh, ask you to move in our hearts and in our lives in jesus name amen as we sing together you step out and you come whatever the need is today the lord will meet you here you come right now Thank you. You may be seated this morning. Um, our kiddos are going to make their way back over here from uh, uh, Children's Church in just a moment. They'll probably be uh, coming in any moment now. And while we wait for them and uh, have our very special Mother's Day time, I, uh, because it wasn't super applicable in the, in the message this morning, but I have also been able to witness firsthand another another uh, mom's influence and impact on on my family and that is my wife boy the impact you've had continue to have it's so special and thank you so much for all your love that you give to our three kids and now our grandkids hard to believe that we're old enough to have grandkids isn't it but uh but life just keeps getting better and better and and uh, we are very, very thankful and very, very blessed. And uh, uh, as Holly was saying this morning in, uh, in her devotion uh, that, that they're about to be empty nesters in about a year, that's us too. Man, we have been parents for like ever. Had kids at home for like ever. And so uh, when, when, uh, when uh, Phil and Holly, we came on staff with, with Phil and Holly, we were able to immediately uh, lean on each other for all the years that we have both been parents and and uh and now grandparents and so uh, what a what a joy that is so 
All right, here's what we're going to do. We have, we have flowers this morning for our moms. And so uh, I want to uh, get all of our kids that have a mom and or a grandmother a flower. So when I say kids, I mean like birth to like eight years old, okay? Or how about this, birth to elementary. If you're in elementary school, you come on down right now. Hurry, 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 hurry. Come on down and get a flower for your mama, okay? And for your grandmother, if you got a grandmother here. And, Cade, you even have a great-grandmother here. So uh, that's three for you, man. How about that? So here we go. Don't, don't be picky. Just grab one and go. They should come out pretty easy. I'll help you if you need to. There we go. All right, all right. All right. And uh, now, teenagers, if you've got a mom, grandmother, or I would also extend this to you teenagers, if you have a special lady in your life that is here in church that means just a whole lot to you, you take her a flower too. Here, give it to Kate. Some of our moms, grandmothers are going to go home with a whole bouquet. Four? Sure. Huh? I need a little time. Okay. Now, adult children that have their moms here today, you guys come on, or grandmothers, you guys come on down, guys and gals. Oh, by the way, when you get back to your moms, you can hug their neck and kiss them on the cheek, man. I'm telling you, it is, it is just fine to show a little love and affection this morning. That is just fine and dandy. In fact, it should be expected. Orange? Didn't, didn't, that was just what happened. I know. Oh, Emma. Oh, okay. She's in the nursery. Okay, good. Good. Okay, now, okay, this is the last, uh, the last little group, but, but if there is any of you, any of you guys and gals that you have a special lady that you just love and adore and you just want them to have flowers this morning, you come and get them, all right, and take them to those uh, ladies, please. Will you do that right now? Because, man, I tell you, they are so, our moms are so, so, so incredibly special to us. And here's the thing, I don't want any of our ladies leaving without at least one flower this morning. Some of you guys are representing for other kids, and that is perfect. That aren't able to be here today. You, Leo, Leo, Liam, Daniel. I'm doing well. Make sure Miss Sheila gets about four flowers, okay? She she knows only why I'm saying that. She, this is kind of a private joke just between us. I was so happy that you were going to be here today. <laughs> When Holly told me you were going to be here, I was like, yes, Miss Sheila's going to be here. In fact, I'm going to take, her, I'm going to take Miss Sheila a flower myself. <laughs> From me to you, uh, yes, I love you. <laughs>
I think if anybody deserves a round of applause today, it is our moms and our grandmothers. That is for sure. Man, what a special day and, and what, a, what a glorious time to celebrate. We should do this more often for sure. Uh, we love you so, so much and we are so thankful for you. And uh, I know we've got several moms that are visiting here today and, 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 uh, and also sons and daughters visiting today. I am so glad that, that uh, you were able to celebrate today as a family. Continue that celebration right on through the day. Miss Alcyon, let's be dismissed with, a, with our chorus, uh, Blessed Assurance. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Stand together with me. Hope you can be back tonight at 6 for our evening service. It'll be live streamed as well as on the radio, KXOX. But we hope to see you in person tonight at 6 o'clock. Let's sing. This is my story. 